It's good to see you. It's remix time. Whenever I get asked to do a remix, there are a couple of questions I'd like to get answered first. Uh, for example, for which label is it? For which artist is it? Uh, what is the deadline? Uh, do they want to have a specific sound or do I have creative freedom? Uh, what is their promotion plan? And is there a remix fee available? And how is the contract set up? I always check out the original track first to see if I like it and to see if I get inspiration from just listening to the original mix. And if so, then I ask for stems um, to see if I can get creative with the elements that stand out most in the track. If it's not working after multiple tries, um, personally I think it's better to just pass on this remix. Uh, because I think you only should do a remix if you can be of value to the whole release. Uh, and in this case, for me it's also always quality over quantity. In this particular case, Somatic Records asked me to do a remix of Starkado's I Hope You Care. And while playing around with the stems, I noticed that it could work out. So I told them I would like to do the remix and I started right away. And in this video, I will take you through the process of creating the remix for I Don't Care by Staccato. So when starting with a remix, um, you have the stems to begin with. Personally, I don't like to use uh, drum sounds from stems because I, don't, I wanted to have my own signature sound in it. And I think drums are an important part of that. I laid down all the melodic parts right here and we're gonna have a listen to them. And when I listen to the stems, I always try to find something that is interesting and that fits my style. So whenever I go through the stems, I instantly know what I would like to use. So this is how the finished remix looks like. And here is the in clavier that I used. I use this as a background sound. And then over here we have those effects. Uh, the vocals. Some of the rights, uh, which are the only drums that I used. Just because they're so effective and simple. And then there's this Inception stem. Okay, so that are the only stems that I used. And let's listen to how the track actually sounds. I'll take you to the arra arrangement and explain uh, what's happening. And I'll skip through it as well, so you don't have to listen for it for seven minutes. Okay, so the intro is pretty basic. Uh, you can hear that background sound, which is filling up the space really nice. On the background you can already hear an ARP. That 
is playing throughout the whole track. And then a layer is coming in. After 32 bars, the bass is coming in. With some reversed steps. And then at 48 bars, the first vocal part is coming in. And I'm filling it up with some strings in the background. You can also wear a vocal chop, which is also a main part of the track. And then at 65 bars, the break starts and the synth comes in. The break lasts for 16 bars and there's a small reverb build going on before it drops. Drop is pretty mi minimalistic, not too much going on. Then after 8 bars the hi-hats and the vocal chops come in again. And in the next part, the synth lead is coming in. With some rolling hi-hats. Then after 16 bars, we're going through the bridge. Introducing the strings right here with a very long note. The arp is going up and then the big break. So in the big break I use this vocal stems and this inception sound. And I use the melody of the original strings, but with my own sounding strings. Raising the tension a little bit. Vocal chops coming in. Alongside with the arp. And then the drop. In the second drop, the synth lead is in there from the beginning. Then the hi-hats. And then after 16 bars, rides for some extra energy. And then after 16 bars, it's finished and then there is the outro, which will play for 32 bars. Building things off and then there is the end. So the drums in this track are not really complex, uh, they are actually quite simple, uh, these are the only from samples that I use. So the kick, a hi-hat, and some rolling hi-hats, where there's a noise automation that uh, randomizes a kind of noise effect. The bass line is recorded with uh, the MOOC sub-sequence.
and I wanted to have a groovy bass line. So together with the kick, it gives it this bouncy feel. Didn't do much processing. Got rid of the high frequencies. A limiter to make sure the peaks are not really much higher than the average volume. And over here we have an ARP, which starts from the beginning of the track. And it's recorded um, from the MOOC as well. I put a panomatic on there to create some movement and a little reverb. And I use this equalizer to create an automation clip as a kind of a filter. So you can open it up when the tension is rising. And then there's the layer of the ARP, which is more like a kind of a mid bass. They play the same pattern. And I pitch this down an octave. On this layer, I got rid of the very lows and the very highs. And with the supercharger, I automated the saturation. So in some cases when you want to build up stuff, uh, you can make it a little bit more filthier with using the saturation up, as you can hear right here. And also before the drop. Those two ARPs are linked to the reverb channel. So this channel makes sure uh, the reverb is coming in uh, right before the drop to create a little bit more tension. Works always really well. One of the major parts of this track is of course the vocal. So this is the original vocal and I wanted to do something creative with the vocal. And I gave it a, some kind of a blur effect. You can hear that it's saying, I hope you care. And it's looping. I hope you care. And a way to create something like this is, uh, let me copy it for a second is you can edit sample in Edison and over here you have the blur effect and there you have like a blurred version of the sample I automated the filter from this one 
uh, this knob. And what I did to process this is get rid of the lows and the highs. Supercharger to boost it a little. The most important part is the gross beat, which gives it this rhythmic feel. Which is just a drum loop preset from gross beat. And then I automated the mix of the gross beat. So when it's building up towards the drop, it blends into the original sample. So it sounds like it's widening up. So you can play around with this to create some interesting things. Uh, another thing I did is link the balance knob to the peak controller. I hope you can. And now it randomizes the pen effect on this vocal. So it gives it some movement. All right, and then we're going to the lead sound which is this one. It's a sound that I created with my Korg Minilog XD. And I really like how warm the sound is. Uh, I'll show you how it sounded before and after processing. Got rid of the highs and lows. Supercharger to boost it a little. Give it a little, little saturation. Then the filter. So I can automate the filter and decide how deep I want it to sound. Then there's the camel crusher, which gives it a little bit more edge. Uh, it's a free plugin, the Camel Crusher, so if you think that's interesting, interesting for you, then uh, go get it. Um, and here I have a delay effect to make it sound really white, and then a reverb from Realm to give it that space. And then at the end, I have a limiter. To make sure there are no high peaks. And as mentioned, I automated the cutoff frequency. So in the drop, it never sounds exactly the same. From this Quark lead sample, I used a part to reverse it, this one. I pitched it down one octave to create a bit of a darker sound. And I used this sample throughout the whole track to create a little bit of variation. Right, here we have strings that's coming in at 1.30. Just two simple notes. With a big reverb and a stereo widener. And the EQ gives it a little dark, moody effect. Which is great to fill up your track with and create a kind of uh, atmosphere. I 
So for the big break, the strings are very important. Uh, it is the same melody as the original track, but I use my own sounds for it. It's a layer from String Ensemble from Contact. Which sound like this. And Spitfire Labs, a pad sound. This is a free plugin. I recently made a video about it. Um, so if you're interested in it, sure, check it out. And together, it sounds pretty full. They are linked to this patch channel. And on this patch channel, I have a replica XT, which creates a kind of a atmospheric spacey effect, which pitches up the signal. And then in this part, I use the uh, original bass sounds to make it really fat. <laughs> <laughs> 